We got, we got Zeno in North Carolina. How are you, Zeno? I'm great. Better than last time. How about you, Matt? I, I don't know. We're going to see because we're getting some repeat callers uh, from positions that I, I don't think have been really merited out. You're you're a deist, correct? Yeah. And, I, and, it, I, and it says here, the call screener, it says, you have proof for God from your epistemology. Why should I care about your epistemology? Have you demonstrated that your epistemology is sound? Yes, I, I, I have. I just wanted to start Where? with that. It's a question I have for you. I, I do have a question. I hope we can rework out some issues that we had last time but, because I am recovering from religion, and, and I really just want some just some answers. Sure. I, Ask away. Um, okay, great. Um, I don't want to start off on the bad foot. Um, my epistemology, I, it's different from of the current epistemology that's used in science. And so the epistemology I go by as the theory of knowledge that asserts that knowledge arises from evidence gathered via sense experience. So that was basically empiricism. Um, emphasize oh. experience, yes, and evidence, especially sense perception I, in the formation I, of ideas. I'm just waiting for you to get to your question. Okay, so, so my question is, um, if we drew a circle, and this circle represented how much we knew, um, how much we could know about the universe, and uh, we drew another circle representing how much we do know, um, that would be a very small circle in comparison to the big circle. So my question is, not understanding how much we don't know, uh, w would you say that it is irrational to start believing in these deities? Um, with regards to how much we don't know if we work backwards, Matt, that's a question for you, Matt. So, so first of all, um, you don't know what you don't know. And so if here's a, here's the things, all the things we could potentially know, and here's a very small thing of what we actually do know, the, the circles that you're saying, um, we definitely don't currently know that a God exists. And we also don't know whether or not we could know whether a God exists. And so the time to believe something is after there's been a rational evidence-based demonstration of it. And so no one can be justified in believing in a God until they can show that it is both in the set of things that we could know and in the set of things that we do know. My, my response to that is, uh, I just, with a quick question, you are, you are a magician, correct, Matt? Yes. Did you, did you, um, Okay, and I'm, I'm not a great magician, but uh, me and my friends entertain this thought um, how there, there are the things that we can know and not reveal to the audience, you know? And so we kind of could get away with this whole trick where we, we, there are things we can know, but, but we don't have to share it. And so, so um, what I'm saying, what this demonstrates is that there are things in this world we can't demonstrate. So that, that, that's why I think the complexity of these conversations are so difficult because what I'm trying to discuss with you is that uh, if you said, hey, hey, you know, give me some physical proof. I, I, I can't give you physical proof. We would have to get to talking about what can be. And I, and I know that's going to make for a messy conversation because there's millions of possibilities of what can be. So, as you know, you're now boring me to tears because all I pointed out was that there's a set of things. I, I went with your sets about what we can know, what we do know. And then you went on to, are you a magician? Well, me and my magician friends talk about what we can know, but don't really reveal to the audience. That has absolutely nothing to do with whether or not anyone can or does have a justified belief in a God. Not a zip, zilch. Well, the Mm -hmm. Well, the God I believe in um, is a, a God that chooses not to reveal itself. Then you are completely irrational because you're claiming to believe in something that you recognize you do not and cannot have evidence for. This is my epistemology. This is empiricism. Then your epistemology is flawed because it's leading you to believe something Out that you simultaneously recognize you do not have evidence for. But that's not, wait, what type of evidence are you talking about? Because there's so many types, right? You yes, already sir. stated that you believe in a God that you cannot investigate. 
Well, I think he's saying that he can uh, he can experience it, and that's how he knows. But he doesn't really understand why experience isn't evidence for a deity. Is that correct? Yes, I, I would say using empiricism and understanding that there's so many different types of evidence. I can't. It's Zeno, you are not listening because you are not listening because Jenna just suggested that you experience God and you said yes, and then you went to empiricism. And you're also listed as a deist, which means you don't think you experience God. Do you in any way experience the God you believe in? Yes, sir. Ha then it's not a deistic God because deistic gods are non interventionist gods. Oh, wait. But my deistic, my my deistic God has these properties. I, I'm not going to say that this deistic God. Then it's not a deistic God. It's you, a deistic God. So what are the properties of your God? I'm not. You admitted that the God chooses not to reveal itself, yet you think you experience it. Yes, I I experienced it, but I'm I'm not re I'm not experiencing this God with my eyes and my what? Body. Nobody said that. Yeah. What are the properties of your God, and how do you know this? Okay, so the properties, I can I can start with, first, it's omniscient. How do you know that? Any human being, because it is above us. We're here. No, 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 no. You don't get to say what it is. How do you know that God is omniscient? I'm, I'm trying to explain to you. So I, I... How did you come to that conclusion, I think, is what... I know. I'm trying, I'm trying to get there. My experience using your epistemology, it wouldn't make sense. So using my epistemology, I, I don't give a fuck about your epistemology. I'm asking you, how do you know that God is omniscient? I'm trying to tell you. Well, then stop stalling and just say it. I, I think you're incapable of understanding. Fuck off. Okay. I am incapable of understanding and you're the one who says that you have a deistic God that has properties that you can assess, that you experience, but not in any way that would apply to a normal epistemology, but your epistemology is superior. That's but fine. he's also assuming that he understands what your epistemology is and that it's flawed and therefore that he needs to use his. Yeah. So I, that's I just asked repeatedly, how do you know? See, this, this is the confusion of thinking that you know a God, you experience a God, it has properties, and you think you know about those properties, and yet you don't have any way to test it. A deistic God is non-interventionist. It's undetectable. To claim that you've detected the undetectable and then suggest the rest of us just don't understand is a whole new area of arrogance I just I can't even process. Yeah.